because back in 2018, you asked about this miracle that happened to her. Sister Agnes was um, suffering from a tumor in her throat, and it was preventing her from swallowing. It was painful, and it seemed at one point it even kind of almost caused her to choke and that uh, if it wasn't for the fact that she was in a, a nurse or, or a relative of hers happened to be visiting her, did the, like a Heimlich maneuver on her or something, she would have probably choked to death. So she has a sister who, a, a sister in her religious community, Sister Teresa Masuda, who was um, kind of like assigned to be her caregiver and kind of her guardian when she lived out in a convent. And later on, when she went to the nursing home, she would still go and act as her guardian and kind of keep an eye on her. Um, Sister Teresa, uh, or Sister Agnes said to Sister Teresa, it seems that the last thing that God wants to take my voice from me, that maybe, you know, he doesn't, that this is the last offering that I have to give is my very voice that he wants to take from me. Because she was having difficulty speaking drinking, eating. So they took her to uh, Father McKay, who was like the spiritual director and confessor for Sister Agnes, Sister Trees, and some other lay women. There was five of them. They went to see this Father McKay to go for their monthly, maybe monthly spiritual direction and confession. And at the time, they asked him to anoint Sister with the sacrament of the sick. And as he performed this sacrament, he also put his hands at her throat and he was praying. And, and uh, Sister Teresa wrote in a letter to Dave Dionisi that as he was praying, he started to shake and tremble all over his body. Not just his hands, but his whole body seemed to be trembling. And Father McKay said twice, evil spirits afflicting this soul or what, something to that, but he did mention evil spirits flee or be gone. And after he finished praying, he said to Sister Agnes, Sister, I think now you'll be able to, to drink and eat freely because those two evil spirits that were opp oppressing you have been driven away. And Sister said, please give me a drink, give me a glass of water. And she took that glass of water and she gulped it down with no problem. And later on, they sent her to her doctor, who sent her for an examination by an ear, nose, and throat. They did some scanning of her throat and everything. And, and um, the doctor, after seeing the re review of her, her examination, said, Sister, what happened to that tumor in your throat that was about the size of a one yen coin, which probably was bigger than a nickel, but smaller than a quarter? But it was a good-sized lump in her throat. He said, did you swallow it? And she said, no. Once the priest prayed over me, it immediately left me, and she's not been afflicted by it since. So that was in 2018, in September, when she received this miracle from God that kind of helped free her so that she could once again speak and, and uh, eat freely. And so in many ways, not only were the demons trying to keep her from speaking, but even sad to say, church officials seem to be keeping her under lock and key because recently when when um, Dave, after our visit in April, he tried to go see her in, in October of this year with the guide who took us, they were they kept stalling him and preventing him and said that he couldn't meet with her, that they gave all kinds of reasons why he couldn't meet with her, all oh, that her health is too frail or that this and that, and um, and and you just came to realize that, that it wasn't a figment of your imagination, that really they're trying to keep her from being, having any access to the public. And um, some people would say, well, maybe she doesn't want to be bothered by people, but she said back in 2015 that that was one of the things that she most wanted everybody to know is the message of Our Lady of Akita that she wanted everybody to know this message because it's so important for people to know about this. So that, you know, if we do our prayers and our penance to pray the rosary and the sign left by my son, um, that's the beneficial thing that Dave and his friend who's Japanese learned is that they couldn't meet with sister, but 
they actually stumbled across a book written by Father Yasuda, which was not really a book written by him. It was really someone transcribed all of his homilies that he gave and was published in 2003. And in there, he said, many people ask about the sign left by my son. Some people say it's the cross or it's communion. And he said, Sister Agnes was never told what the, cro what the sign is left by my son. She didn't know. And, but he's a father Yasuda, who was the one who was, was given the grace to interpret, said, well, really, it could be both the cross and communion, which really means it's the holy sacrifice of the mass, because he said, that's where we find the cross and communion combined is in the holy sacrifice of the mass. And this seems that that would be a very good interpretation because the famous vision that St. John Bosco had of the Pope on the bark of Peter being attacked by all those ships, that the thing that finally saved the church represented by the Pope on that ship was he took that ship that was being attacked and even was in danger of being sunk as he put the ship between two pillars, Our Lady and the Eucharist. Of course, being the Mass where we receive the Eucharist, that those two arms, those two weapons that we'll have it will give us hope and consolation and victory during this time of great chastisement or whatever is going to happen, persecution. That will be Our Lady and the Blessed Sacrament, Our Lady, her rosary, and the Mass. So that that was maybe one beneficial thing that came out of this attempt to meet with Sister Agnes, that maybe... She's a, her. She's speaking indirectly through Father Yasuda and this work that he wrote back in 2003, which was so important that uh, he kind of gave us this insight into that. Kind of that's one of the things I wanted to know from Sister back when I went in April, but I didn't get a chance to ask her because uh, before we could depart or before we could ask her, they asked us to leave. So, and she wouldn't have known. I didn't know that she didn't. She was never told. She probably would just said, "Well, I really don't know what that sign is because Our Lady never told her explicitly what that meant." So we know if she's up in her nineties. That's why Dave says uh, that the group that I was with, the other two people, that we may be the last persons that possibly were able to see Sister uh, from the West, anyway, to see Sister um, alive and and communicate with her because she really seems to be being kept under kind of a lock and key. You know, Sister Lucy was in a in a cloistered Carmel. Well, it's understandable, you know, that there would be limited access to her. And um, but Sister's not in a cloistered community. She was in an active community, but they seem to be kind of keeping her under uh, under wraps, you might say. And um, maybe it's because I, obviously they don't want to they don't want to keep drawing attention to the messages of Akita because so many so much of it is taking place right now. And people would say, wow, you know, this doesn't sound like we're heading in a, the right direction because it seems to be all the things that our lady's pointing to. We seem to be heading down that road of not a good way to be proceeding, you know.